Hello, Harriet. My wife get off all right? Yes, and I'm sure glad you're back. Now, I don't have to write all the things she told me to tell you. She says... I know. Don't forget to lock the back door. Don't forget to pay the butcher bill. Don't forget to drink a warm glass of milk every night. Handkerchiefs in the top drawer, shirts in the middle drawer, and the socks in the bottom drawer. That's right. Of course it is. And she promised that when she got back, she's going to let me cross the street alone without a Boy Scout. Now, you don't appreciate the missus. The way that she worried about leaving you alone for three days. Me alone? She should know by now I won't be alone for long. All I have to do is call Ava Gardner and tell her my wife's out of town. <laughs> So what happened to Sophia, Lauren? What Sophia doesn't know won't hurt her. Anything else? Yes. She said for you not to forget Anne's birthday. You don't think I'd forget my daughter's birthday? Well, she thought it would be nice for you to take her out to dinner. She must be kidding. On a Saturday night, I'd stand a better chance if I did call Ava Gardner. It only takes 10 cents to find out. 30 cents. It's a toll call. <laughs> it's not the money. It's just that I can't stand rejection. A grown man should be able to stand a little rejection. I can, but not from that girl. dinner with you. No, I don't have a date. Oh, I love the Carlton Room. Honestly, Daddy, I don't have a date. Okay. See you Saturday night. Bye. But you do have a date with Don. Why didn't you tell him the truth? Because Daddy wasn't telling the truth. Oh, so it's a family tradition. <laughs> and what are you talking about? You know how I love surprises, especially birthday surprises. Yes. Well, I think that's what's going to happen. In fact, I'm sure it's going to happen. Daddy didn't once mention on the telephone anything about my birthday, and all of a sudden, Mother's off on this mysterious visit to Aunt Gladys up in Baltimore. See? It's obvious. What's obvious? A surprise party. Can't you see it? We go to the Carlton room. The major d ushers Daddy and I to a table. We sit down, a little chit-chat, and then the whole family pops up and yells surprise. Aunt Rosie, Uncle Harry, Aunt Gladys, the whole family, and Mother. Oh, do you really think so? Oh, I'm sure of it. And I'm gonna have to act like I never suspected a thing. <laughs> It'll be tougher than any audition I ever went on. <laughs> what are you gonna do about Don? Oh, I better call him and break our date. I'm sure he'll understand. Sure, honey. He's your father. I understand perfectly. You do? You mean you're not angry? Of course not. Why should I be angry? Well, after all, we did have a date. Wait a minute, honey. Now, wait a minute. You're making it sound as though I called you to break our date. You called me, remember? Oh, well, okay. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> Bye. Oh, what a dope I am. Donald's gonna be at my surprise party, too. <laughs> Who is it? Me. Okay. Why did you open the door? To let you in. How did you know it was me? Because you said it was you. Do you always open up the door to anybody who says it's me? Do you think if it was a burglar, he'd say it was a burglar? I could have been a burglar. Oh, that's ridiculous. Mother never would have married you. <laughs> Make jokes. And I'm not supposed to worry that you're living alone. Now, Daddy, no picking. We're going to have a nice evening. Okay. How's this for a start? Oh, Daddy. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Well? Very nice. 
Do you have to wear so much makeup? Isn't that skirt a little short? Now, Daddy, if you don't stop picking, I'm gonna go in there and put on my longest earrings. You know how you feel about me and long earrings. All right. Okay. No more picking? No more picking. Okay. Can't wait to get to the cotton room. They've got the best music there. There. Anne, are you sure this thing is warm enough? Ah, oh, say, Daddy, you've certainly got a lot to learn about taking out a date. <laughs> with the last of the big spenders. Well, easy come, easy go. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, can I help you? Good evening, uh, Marie, Elle Marie. Ah, yes, I have something that will suit you nicely. This way, please. Thank you. Wait, Anne. I don't want this table. But, sir, when I called, I was promised a good location. This isn't it. I am terribly sorry, sir, but the only other thing I have is a table for eight. I don't care if it's a table for 18. I was promised the best, and that's what I'm going to get. Come on, Ed. <laughs> Thank you. But, sir, it is not possible for you. Look, I'm in the restaurant business, too. When you promise a customer a good table, he gets it. Very well, monsieur. I told him, didn't I? <laughs> you certainly did. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, Daddy, you really are a rotten actor. What are you talking about? <laughs> now, the maitre d' wasn't bad, but you, you just came on too strong. I don't see what you're driving at. Cocktail before dinner? <laughs> uh, yes, I'll have a scotch on the rocks. And for the lady? Thank you. I'll have a vermouth cassis, very dry. Merci. Mm, vermouth cassis, very dry. Where did you learn that? Where else? From an old Charles Boyer picture. <laughs> Who is it? It's me, Don. Come on in. What's going on? Why did you call? Where's Anne? Anne is on a date with her father. Well, what are you doing in her apartment? Well, I left the latch off the door so that I could come in and she wouldn't know about it. It's all part of my master plan. What master plan? Well, you're not at her surprise party tonight, and neither am I. Okay. Well, Anne's expecting a big surprise party, and when you weren't invited and I knew I wasn't invited, I figured maybe there wasn't going to be a party. Okay. Well, she's expecting this big surprise party. If she doesn't get it, she's going to be terribly disappointed. So? So, I figure we make her a party and make sure she's not disappointed. Are you nuts? She's out with her father. Who knows when she'll get home? What difference does it make? Tomorrow's Sunday. You can do the crossword puzzle in the afternoon. Now, come on. There are a million things to do. Now, I want you to go out and buy her the biggest cake you can with her name on it and hurry. Daddy, I never knew. It wasn't for nothing that they named a sandwich after me at Roseland. <laughs> I bet it had ham in it. Why not? And you inherited a little bit of it yourself. since we got here. What are you looking for? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I just thought maybe somebody we know might come in. No, who would come in here that we know? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Funny about Mother just going off to Aunt Gladys is so sudden-like. Funny. Your Uncle Oscar had to go to Chicago for a few days, and your aunt is afraid to stay in the house alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Mother said over the telephone. 
But I thought that was kind of a strange, crazy reason. Strange? No. Crazy? Yes. <laughs> Remember, your Aunt Gladys is on your mother's side of the family. <laughs> but why should that bother you? Oh, no reason. Are you having a good time? Oh, Daddy, I'm having a wonderful time. Good. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Oh, Daddy, you shouldn't have. You know, this entire evening is going to cost you a fortune. It's all right. Your mother gives me a big allowance. <laughs> you mean I can wear them? Of course you can wear them. But these are the kind you said I wasn't grown up enough to wear. Well, now you are. You know something, Daddy? This is the most important present I've ever received in my whole life. How can you turn a pair of earrings into a federal case? Oh, Daddy, don't you see? Getting these from you means that you've accepted me as a whole, entire, separate person. A whole, entire, separate person. Good. That's the only kind I like to dance with. <laughs> Sandwiches, um, people, people. Aren't you gone yet? Where am I going to get a birthday cake at this hour? Oh, try a bakery. All the hardware stores are closed. <laughs> Dr. Bessemer, please. Hello, Leon. You've got to come home right away. Oh, well, deliver the baby as fast as you can. <laughs> Leon, this is an emergency delivery, too. Now, you've got to come home as fast as you can and bring home sandwiches of all different kinds and potato chips and pizza. Tell me, young lady, did you take a bath this morning? Hmm? Why, is there one missing? <laughs> I say, would you care to join me in a cup of tea? Are you sure there's room for both of us? <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait. I've got one. Have you? I just got a wonderful job. I'm a matter in a furniture factory. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. I'm feeling just fine. <laughs> <laughs> How old did you say you were when we carried out like that? Nine. Nine years old. <laughs> Daddy, why should that make you sad? Why shouldn't it? Look at all these gray hairs since then. You know what? I'm going to come home and take care of you until Mother gets back. No, there's no need for that. I can take care of myself. No, now I've made up my mind. We don't even have to stop at my apartment. I've still got plenty of skirts and sweaters left at home. Okay? If I said no, I'd be lying. And you know what a rotten liar your old man is. <laughs> but we still have places to go. Garçon, la décision. Hey, that's very good. Well, you're not the only one who sees Charles Boyer movies. Oh, you know, I better call Judy and tell her I'm not coming home. She'll be worried stiff. Can I borrow a dime? I haven't got a dime. Here's a quarter. Thank you, Diamond Jim. Bring back the change. <laughs> eight corned beef on rye, eight salami on rye, mm. one corned beef on white. A corned beef on white? Yeah, you never know when some square might show up. I like it on white. A present company excluded. <laughs> you got it! Yep. I can describe every closed bakery on Madison, 2nd, and 3rd Avenues. I got this one guy as he was putting the key in the lock. Oh, you're <laughs> marvelous. Let me see. Ever seen what what flavor? Did... Happy birthday, Bessie? It was either that or happy bar mitzvah, Kevin. <laughs> And we can shoot rockets to the moon, but an eraser for whipped cream. I get it. Hello? Hello? There's no one on. It's still ringing. Hello? Hey, that's our phone. Now, let's pull this up and see what it looks like. I want you to know a lot of time and effort went into this. I can see that. And what do you think? Happy birthday? No. Well, don't worry, Leon. It's not the spelling. It's the sentiment. <laughs> Let me have it. We'll do it again. Forget it. What'd you say? What? Forget the entire thing. Anna's going home with her father. Oh, no. Oh, what are we going to do now? I know why. What? what? Let's eat the sandwiches. <laughs> oh, no, 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 wait a minute. After all the trouble I went through to get that cake, even if it was made for Bessie, Anna's going to have her party. Where'd she call? The Carlton room. OK, I'll catch them there. I'll be right back. Great. <laughs>
So this is where you and your actor friends hang out. Nicer than I figured. What you figured was probably an opium den. Daddy, when are you going to realize that acting is a legitimate profession filled with serious people who are studying their craft? Pam, I'm being followed. Read this menu, memorize it, and eat it. It's better than the food. <laughs> Daddy, this is Johnny Arthur. We went to drama school together. This is my dad. Oh, I'm glad to meet you. Any dad of Anne's is a dad of mine. Thanks. Thanks very much. What'll you have? Two cups of cappuccino. Two cups of cappuccino, right. Well, it was very nice meeting you, and I hope we see a lot of one another. <laughs> Off we to stain my darling. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Adorable. Well, I guess he is a little nutty. Nutty? What makes you say a thing like that? <laughs> ah, yes, here it is, sir. Mr. Lou, Mari, and Lady. Now, now, look, look, she mustn't see me. Where? Which table? Where is she at? Please. They have already gone. Gone? Well, where do they go? Our patrons, upon departing, sir, are not required to leave a forwarding address. <laughs> That's a very good policy. <laughs> we didn't have a cup of cappuccino, but we had a glass of cappuccino, so here you have two glassicinos. <laughs> How can I thank you? Years from now, when you speak of this, and you will, be kind. <laughs> What's that all about? We once did a scene from Tea and Sympathy. Actors, actresses. Anne, you still got time. Go to school. Learn to be a dental assistant. Daddy, why didn't you learn to be a chiropodist? Mother told me all about it. Your father wanted you to be a chiropodist. Yeah, well, maybe he was right. There's a lot of money in feet. If you just listen to me, Anne, I, I know that... Oh, Daddy, please, not tonight. You promised. All right. Oh, by the way, how come the magazine tycoon didn't ask you out on your birthday? He's a fine one. Do you know something? I would like to hear you say something nice about Donald just once. All right, I will. He's not an actor. <laughs> Hi, Al. Could I have a double scotch, please? Sure. It's a funny thing. Take a dozen guys, each one steamed off about something. I can spot in a minute just what's bugging each one of them. One because of a horse that lost by a short nose. Another because of his boss. But take you now. It's written all over your face. Jealousy. Jealousy? Oh, Al, don't be silly. Tell me, have you seen Ann tonight? You gotta keep one thing in your mind. If your girl's in show business, she's gotta go out with a producer once in a while. Ann with the producer? What producer? What are you talking about? I could spot him in a minute, and I'm never wrong. Man in his 50s, nice looking. Hey, gentlemen. Where did you see them? Which way did they go? Look over the top. Was doing all these busy gestures in the scene, and Mr. Benedict said, Don't just do something, stand there. <laughs> She's with her father. Father? Yeah, sure. Don, that's the first time I'm wrong spotting a producer in 17 years. <laughs> Look, Al, you gotta help me. I gotta get her father out of there. <laughs> oh, oh, did I? oh, Dad. Wait till I tell you what you did to your Aunt Gladys. <laughs> Daddy, what's the matter? There's a man winking at me. Oh, Daddy. Must be some kind of a lunatic. Ah, uh, here. What's that? It's your check. I didn't ask for one. Why wait till the last minute? <laughs> Must be rough having a deadbeat for a father. No, he's not. Here, read it and weep. What's the matter now? I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's nerves. I, I, I've been working too hard. I, I tell you what we better do. I'll take you back to your place, and I'll spend the night at a Turkish bath. Uh, steam and a rub might relax me. 
Yes, I think you'd better. Come on. Sure you're okay? I'm just a little nervous, that's all. Oh, Daddy, I'm fine. Look, when I take a lady home, I like to be sure that she gets home safe and sound. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Marie, for a lovely evening. And if you've got a minute, I've got a little confession to make. Wouldn't we be more comfortable in the apartment? Do you know what I've been thinking all evening, Daddy? Sure, your old man's a cornball. <laughs> no, you're not a cornball. What I've been thinking is that, well, I thought you'd planned a surprise party for me. And at any minute, I expected to see Mom or Aunt Rosie or Donald or the whole family jump out of somewhere and yell surprise. But it never happened. And you know what? I'm glad. Are you sure? Positive. This is the best birthday I ever had. Thanks, honey. I enjoyed it, too. Good. Uh, you got your key? Yes. What's the hurry? Oh, that's right. You asked the cab driver to wait. Forget the cab. What does a cab mean to Diamond Jim? <laughs> you know what? There's something I've wondered about for the longest time. What? Well, it's funny. I don't know how to start. The beginning's always a good place. <laughs> well, what I want to know is, when Mother was in the hospital, expecting me, <laughs> that sounds kind of silly. Anyway, there you were, pacing up and down, and... and yes? Well, the nurse came in and she said, it's a girl. How did you feel? Were you terribly disappointed? Well... Let me think back. First, I asked how your mother was. Then I asked if you had ten toes, ten fingers, two eyes and a nose. She said yes. Then I thanked God. Then they let me look at you. And I knew that you were what I'd been praying for. Really, Daddy? Let me put it this way. If there was a factory where I could have ordered to my own specifications, you would have been what I ordered, even with all your craziness. Thank you, Daddy. I never did approve of your lingering at the front door with your dates, remember? <laughs> Come on, let's go inside. Take this, honey. You'll shrink his coat. <laughs> Are you really surprised? Yes, I really am. Oh, Paul, thank you. Mr. Bendick will be here later. Oh, good. Leon. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Don't thank me. Thank Alvin Murgerson. He came early. <laughs> Daddy! I thought you were going to be away. For you and free food, I came back. <laughs> thank you. Judy! Yeah. <laughs> How did you keep a secret? I didn't plan it till after you left. <laughs> Thank you. Who are you? I'm Marvin Kronfeld, the cab driver. Where's my money? Here's five. Keep the change. Here, have a salami sandwich. Hey, here's a corned beef. Take two. <laughs> you'll, you'll need something to drink. With. You gotta have something to drink. Just a plain night, right? Boy, what must go on here on New Year's Eve. <laughs> You're the birthday girl. You should be laughing. I am. This is wet laughing. <laughs> being glad you weren't a boy? He isn't the only one. <laughs> you know something, Donald? I'm the luckiest girl in the whole world. Oh, no, you're not. Bessie is. Bessie? Yeah, that's the worst cake I ever tasted. <laughs> <laughs>